Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Is that a pizza bagel statue for me? Oh, thank you. Have you ever eaten something that didn't agree with you, leaving you to spend hours vomiting with diarrhea or abdominal cramps? Well, then you might have had food poisoning, an illness caused by eating something contaminated, spoiled, or toxic. Oh, no, not your toxic, Brittany. I, I was referring to a different one, sorry. The CDC estimates that 48 million people get food poisoning each year, and 3,000 people die from it. There are over 250 different types of foodborne illnesses, caused by either bacteria, parasites, or viruses. Depending on which illness you have, symptoms can start appearing in just 30 minutes and up to a month later. Bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus is typically transferred to foods during preparation, by either the handler or the prep surface. Since it would be killed if heated or pasteurized, it's most often found on foods that aren't cooked after handling, like deli meats, pastries, and salads. Once ingested, the bacteria spores release toxins that cause vomiting and intestinal distress. Studies have found that Staph aureus toxins can stimulate a nerve in your abdominal region that transmits a signal to the vomiting center of the brain. Yeah, that's right. Your brain actually has a region dedicated to vomiting. These toxins may also activate your digestive system's immune response, which, in addition to vomiting, can cause gastrointestinal issues. Studies also suggest that diarrhea is caused by the prevention of water and electrolyte absorption in the small intestine. Other types of food poisoning can cause more serious medical issues. E. coli, which is responsible for last year's romaine lettuce recall, produces a dangerous toxin that can make its way to your organs and prevent protein production. For most foodborne illnesses like Staph aureus, symptoms last from 28 to 48 hours, but other types like E. coli can take several days for you to recover. While there isn't much to be done in terms of treatment since your body needs to rid itself of these toxins, it's important to drink plenty of water to avoid dehydration, which is the main complication of food poisoning. Most cases are mild, but some populations are at higher risk, like babies, the elderly, pregnant women, and those with chronic diseases or weakened immune systems. These individuals may need to be hospitalized to receive fluids intravenously. Some types of food poisoning can be extremely dangerous to these groups. For instance, the bacteria Listeria can be life-threatening for a fetus, while E. coli can cause damage to the kidneys and cause renal failure in children. To avoid foodborne illnesses, remember to wash your hands and food preparation utensils and surfaces after they come in contact with raw foods. Cook your meats and eggs to the correct temperature, wash your fruits and veggies and keep them separate, and only eat at restaurants with good health inspection scores. You know, avoid the gas station sushi. Triangle Bob, just put it down. It's, it's not as good as you think it is. And most importantly, when in doubt, just throw it out. Trust me, it doesn't matter how good it looks, it's not worth the risk. So have you ever gotten food poisoning before? If you're comfortable with sharing your experience, Tell us in the comment section below. Curious to know if a plant can grow inside your body? Check out this video. Despite what your friends told you when you were a kid, a swallowed watermelon seed will not grow into a watermelon in your stomach. Your stomach contains enzymes and acids that would break down most seeds or plants. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.